Um, as Nate mentioned, we really do appreciate your feedback. Today's presentation actually was uh, a topic that came up from feedback uh, from you, the listener. Uh, so we, we definitely watch that and want to uh, put together presentations that are meaningful for you. So with that, let me jump into today's workflow. Uh, we're going to be talking about two tools in particular. Again, Nate mentioned Shared Parameter Manager and Family Processor. Before I jump into the tools, though, I want to talk about the issues that pop up and why I'm using these tools and what problem I'm trying to solve. So let's take a look at the issue. So I have a library of content that has problems in some form, whether it be inconsistent parameters, they, they don't match my standards, maybe there's, there's uh, formulas that need to be on there that, that don't exist, and you know, whatever the case may be, the content in my library doesn't work the same from one family of a similar type to the next. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, I end up with parameter files that, that are, you know, perhaps multiple parameter files. Maybe I've acquired a company, I'm a large, uh, you know, architectural or engineering firm and I bought another, a smaller company, and I'm trying to merge their workflows into my main company. Or maybe I'm using manufacturer content that was uh, built on a different standard and the manufacturer gave me their shared parameter file. Possibly they've got some good parameters in there that I want to use. Or maybe they've got some parameters that are similar to mine with different names. I need to find a way to resolve that. So, um, and, and of course, again, the family content that I've got is all based on either those you know, outside parameters or mine or a combination of the two. And manual correction of these families is incredibly tedious. Now, I want to make sure I level the playing field here. So for those of you who haven't necessarily dug deep into family creation just yet, what I want to do is a quick demonstration in Revit so you can see um, what it is I'm talking about. Now I'm going to be using for the primary portion of today's presentation this electric water heater um, that I just randomly pulled down from the internet uh, from a couple of different sites. I actually have the same manufacturer here a couple of times and then a few others that are in the mix as well. But I'm going to use this as my example for today. So inside of here, if I open up this particular family, I see that they have a ton of different parameters and a few of these parameters perhaps were customized for a particular firm. Um, you know, uh, possibly they were they were they were built by another content uh, manufacturer. You know, content maker. They they build Revit families, and maybe they branded these parameters in a certain way, or maybe they're using abbreviations, and I don't approve of that. So I want to correct these in some form. First of all, I have to find out if the parameters that they are using, like this one here, where it says phase, matches up with my current shared parameter. If I click on this manually and do a modify, I notice that I have my shared parameter file here pulled up. If I click on select, I can drop down my list. Well, first of all, let's make sure I'm in the right shared parameter file. Yeah, there's a shared parameter file on my desktop for today's presentation, the workflow of shared parameter manager and Revit family processor. Within that file, I may have a phase parameter, but it's not this phase parameter. You know how I can tell? Because I have the ability to export this parameter out of my current family. That means it does not yet exist in my current shared parameter, even though it was originally at one point defined as a shared parameter. It's not mine. It's probably not organized correctly. I like personally phase being inside of my electrical loads category. And so this one isn't in the correct uh, directory there. And there's other things, frequency. There's a GM phase here, perhaps a general mechanical uh, electrical property for phase or something. Now I've got um, apparent power. My standard is apparent load. And so this one isn't quite set up correctly here. And there's a number of other properties in here. The, the basic things in dimensions like height, diameter, and depth, you know, they, they have nominal height on this one. And I want it to just say height and I want it to be my shared parameter. So a number of things that I want to go through and correct. Oh, I notice this. Depth here is actually the nominal diameter plus a little bit. So there's actually a formula at play here also that I would want to make sure I maintained. Now, if I have to go through every single family from this particular manufacturer or potentially families that I got from an acquired company, and look at them like this manually, it's going to take me a long time. Also, if I cancel out of this, if I was to go into my shared parameters file that perhaps I got from this outside source, so I'm looking at my shared parameters file right now, but if I look at this general mechanical shared parameters file here, if I open that up and start looking through it, first of all, I have to search through every single individual group manually and try and find out what they've got. I have to query each parameter manually and see if it matches up with my standards or not. And of course, all the names are, well, in my case, wrong. And so I'd have to go through and correct that. So large, tedious task, right? I'd have a, a monumental task by acquiring a company or getting a manufacturer's shared parameter file and bringing it into mine and trying to merge the two together. It just takes time. 
So with that, let me jump back over to the PowerPoint here and talk about what solutions we're going to use to help mitigate this a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to use Shared Parameter Manager, a tool that we offer in our manager suite to help me fix the parameter file that I've received or possibly even merge the two parameter files together. And I'm going to show you a couple of tools that you can use to handle that. I'm also going to go through and leverage the family processor to update my content that I've received from an outside source to basically make it match up with my parameter, my, my shared parameter file. And maybe I've taken some of those outside shared parameters and fixed them and I've merged them in and I want to modify my family to make sure it's using my updated you know, shared parameters even from that merged file. So we'll take a look at both of those two workflows here and how these two tools, the shared parameter manager and the family processor, can work together. Now I'm going to start with one of the tools in particular first. I like I like to start with Shared Parameter Manager to get my parameters all organized and in alignment nice and neatly. And this even works, by the way, for current shared parameter files that exist in your company. Because Shared Parameter Manager allows you to relatively easily manage any shared parameter file or files. You can actually do multiple files at the same time. It'll help you easily find parameters. It'll let you sort them in certain ways so you can see what kind of parameters exist. You can rename them, you can change data types on parameters, things you can't do with the out-of-the-box parameter management tool at all. You can drag and drop to organize your shared parameter files to get things in the correct groupings. And again, you can find things and then drag and drop them to the correct groups. It just makes the management of parameters a lot easier. So let me show you with the parameter files that I have right now for today's presentation how I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to toggle back over to Revit here for a quick demonstration. I'll leave this family up for the moment. I'm going to go into the Revit Express Tools tab here, and on the CTC BIM Manager Suite, I've got the tool called Shared Parameter Manager. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Inside of Shared Parameter Manager, I'm going to focus today exclusively on the Manage Shared Parameter File tab. There's another tab over here for loading shared parameters into a family or project, but I'm going to ignore that one. For today's purpose, I just want to manage my shared parameter file. I'm going to go ahead, oh, not make a new file, I'm going to browse for an existing file. Now I'm going to open up my company standard shared parameters that I've got at my disposal here. And I'm also going to open up, I'm going to browse and grab the new shared parameters from perhaps uh, an outside source. Maybe it's the acquired company again or the manufacturer. So I can see both shared parameter files side by side. Now because this particular uh, manufacturer file or this outside file has all the GM prefixes on it, I'm not going to be able to actually filter this down and show any kind of conflicts or, or duplicate parameters. There won't be any duplicates. Um, there are probably going to be a lot of naming issues, but there won't be any duplicates in the list, and there certainly won't be any conflicts because all the names are absolutely unique. Um, if I did show unique parameters and I told it to show only the unique parameters, everything on both sides is going to be considered to be unique. That is, until I start merging some of these parameters across into my shared parameter file. Let me give an example of how I can merge things across. I'm going to collapse all these categories here. In fact, let me uh, get rid of this unique filter for a moment here. And I'll show you in a moment here how you can see duplicated parameters that exist in both files. Uh, I'm going to do no filtering here. I'm going to collapse everything on both sides. And, and I'm going to take some of the dimensions, and I'm going to get some of the dimensions to actually exist in my shared parameter file. How am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is grab here the air terminals. I don't think they exist over in my file at all. In fact, I could find out by searching air terminal and see how many exist. Okay, actually, I do have a few. I've got air terminal flow. I've got some static pressure properties down here in the mechanical properties. Um, I've got some finish parameters down here, but um, I don't have anything dimensionally. And so if I wanted to exclusively have air terminal diameter, you know, height, slot length, width, and the actual air terminal width, I want to have those in my shared parameter file. Maybe I'm going to change the name in a moment here, but I want to just get these copied across in the first place. What I'll do is select all five of them, and I'm going to drag and drop them into my dimensions category on the left-hand side. So I've actually added them from this original shared parameter file into my active shared parameter file. So, um, once I've done that, uh, I can now use this filter up here to have it actually show you how many duplicate parameters I have on either side. So you can actually say, show me the duplicates. What it'll do is highlight the, shared, the, the duplicated shared parameters, and I can tell it to only show those if I want to, and what it'll do is collapse all categories that aren't duplicate 
um, and expand out the ones that are. So you can actually see in the orange color here things that are that are duplicated between different uh, shared parameter files if there happens to be any duplicates. Um, I'm not going to be using that too much anymore because I'll be making it so that there aren't any duplicates. In fact, what I'm going to do here is take this parameter that exists called air terminal diameter, but it's prefixed with that general mechanical underscore. I'm going to modify that. And I'm going to take this uh, general mechanical here and just delete it out. Now, notice when I actually double click on this, if I was using the out of the box tool, I could check the properties of something and it would list out what these things are, but I wouldn't be able to change anything. This tool here actually lets me make modifications to it. I can delete part of a name and actually rename a parameter. I could change which group it goes into, which I could do with the out-of-the-box tool as well. I can change the discipline and parameter type of something if it was completely wrong. Maybe I like the name, but I didn't like the parameter type. Um, you can actually, we, we enable you to see the, the visible option here, so you can make it visible or not when it gets used in a family. Um, I can change the user modifiable flag that exists on that as well. And you can also uh, administer your tool tips. So you can actually change this and say, oh, the terminal air terminal diameter is for the actual, you know, base size of a round diameter uh, or a, a round air terminal or something. You can you can give it a tool tip to indicate to the end user when they mouse over that parameter in a in a uh, properties environment, it'll actually fly out with with whatever that tool tip happens to be. That's a new feature of 2015, by the way. In fact, so is user modifiable. Now, when you do make a change to either the name, the discipline, or the parameter type, that is going to force a change of the globally unique identifier in the background. It's, it's called a GUID. I'll use that term for short here from now on, but it'll change that background GUID. Now, when you change that background GUID, any families that were originally using GM underscore air terminal uh, diameter, I'd have to go through and find those and replace them with the new non-GM underscore prefixed air terminal diameter parameter here. So I'm going to make myself a little note in my notebook here on the side that, you know, if I was doing something with air terminals, I would swap that out. Now, for today's purposes, I'm actually working with a water uh, uh, a water heater down here, so I won't be using this particular parameter at all. I'll be using a few others. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this to make this change. You'll actually see this pop up. It says, notice you're changing this particular thing. Do you want to continue? It's going to update that GUID. And we don't have an undo for this, guys. So this is why it's in the Manager Suite tool. You make this change, this is a permanent change. So I'm going to click Yes. And so that is now called Air Terminal Diameter. When I save this shared parameter file right here, that change has been written back to that file. It's a manual save process. So you click save, that change has been made. Um, there was a question that popped up, and it says, uh, when, when you open up shared parameter, if you, you browse for a master shared parameter file, which I'll do right now, I'm going to close this back down, I'm going to open up shared parameter manager. Notice how everything's blank here. It doesn't remember my last setting. We're actually looking at modifying that in an upcoming release of Shared Parameter Manager to remember at least our sh uh, master shared parameter file that was last used. So um, those of you who have worked with this tool in the past a little bit and you notice that this gets forgotten, that was originally intentional and we decided that that perhaps was maybe not the best idea and so instead of having to browse for your shared parameter file every single time, um, this will be remembered uh, uh, possibly in the future in a future release of Shared Parameter Manager. My version does not have that. Uh, just yet, but you know, I think you'll be seeing that soonish. Okay, so I can go through and, and really start finding um, parameters inside of here really easily. Now, some of the parameters I know I'm going to be working with today are some of the electrical parameters. I'm going to browse over, over here and pull up my GM, my general mechanical shared parameters file. I'm going to start doing some searches here. Things like uh, voltage. If I type in voltage, you know, in my main company parameter file, I have a lot of voltages inside of here. And one of the ones that I use quite frequently is one called voltage nominal. Now, I'm noticing over here there's a parameter called GM underscore voltage in that shared parameter file. What I'm probably going to end up doing after having manually reviewed my family and looking at what parameters were linked up, I'm going to take the GM voltage and swap it out for voltage nominal in every single one of the families that I get that's coming from whatever this particular source was. So that's me one of my first steps that I'll be doing. And there's a few other parameters I'll work with as well. But this really helps me find parameters, find what group they used to be in, find what group they're in in my shared parameter file. If I don't necessarily have a match for them, I can drag and drop them across like you saw me do earlier. If I don't necessarily like a naming convention, I can always rename them as you saw me do earlier as well. So with that, that's a little bit about the shared parameter manager and how it can really help you organize your shared parameter file. Oh, and by the way, you can also take and manage your, your shared parameters uh, with drag and drop over 
over here on the left hand side as well. If I decided that maybe I don't want my voltage nominal, my voltage primary and voltage secondary to exist within the electrical productivity pack folder, the little grouping inside my shared parameter file, I personally get to be in electrical dash loads and so I'm going to drag and drop that here as well. So even within my own shared parameter file, I can see multiple groups of parameters and I can drag and drop between them within a single shared parameter file, making the organization process very easy. You know, in the past, um, many of us have tons of shared parameters in our files and they've developed over time and getting back to reorganizing them can be tedious. So as a BIM manager within your company, this tool is fantastic for doing some of that organization. Just straight up organization and possibly even renaming some things here like I'm noticing now that I have these in the same group that I've got voltage hyphen secondary. Well, that's a really bad parameter name. Using mathematical characters and parameter names is a bad idea. So I might take that one since I've already got a voltage secondary here and just delete it. But finding that in a shared parameters file in the first place might have been a little tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that parameter right now and save my shared parameter file, giving myself just a little bit more cleanliness in this file. All right, let me toggle back over to that presentation here again and talk about my next step. So I've cleaned up my shared parameter files, if that's plural, in some form, and I've kind of done some querying back and forth to find out what some of the issues might be. I've opened up a family individually already at this point. I've looked at it. I've seen that there's some issues with it, and I now want to make some changes to it, and I probably have more than one family where those changes have to take place. So that's where family processor comes into the mix. After I've got my foundation of my shared parameter file all put together, now I'm going to go into the actual meat of my content and start fixing it. Now family processor allows you to make a lot of changes um, to a lot of families. Now I'm focusing today specifically on parameters, though I'll kind of touch on um, materials just a little bit here. But for today's purposes, I'm caring more about the parameters of the family, which is where most of us, uh, at least in the standardization portion, really have the, the biggest struggles. So, um, actually, that is, yeah, okay, so I, I re misread my own slide a little bit here. So with, <laughs> with these, these families, I'm going to be able to mass resort parameters that exist in a family. This is true if you're in 2015. If you're before 2015, you can't resort parameters yet, but in 2015, you can resort parameters, and that, since I'm in 2015 today, you'll be seeing me do some mass resorting of parameters, and that is sorting them alphabetically within their groups. You can also run mass changes of parameters. That is, I can take a parameter that already exists and swap it out for a shared parameter. Uh, in my shared parameter file, I can change which group it's in. I can change what its formula or explicit value happens to be. So you can do, and change even instance and type, if it's an instance or a type value, and I'll be making some of those changes today as well. I, I did mention there with that mass changing of parameters, you can also mass update formulas, and that's really important. If you've got a, a ton of families, maybe you've got a ton of parameters in those families, and as you make corrections to them, one of the major corrections, just making them work consistently, is getting them to use the same math in the background. And so using family processor here in a moment, I'm going to be doing a little bit of that as well by modifying some of the formulas. And if formulas are already in use, I can just tell it to leave the formulas alone. And then it won't change them. It'll just change the background parameters that those formulas are using. And it'll actually update the formulas automatically without me having to do anything. Now, really good news about this is that the process that we're about to do can be made repeatable by saving and loading settings. In fact, I've pre-worked out a few of the things that I want to change today. And so this, you know, I'm not usually big into doing like a Betty Crocker presentation and having some stuff pre-baked. But for today's purposes, I did create for myself a couple of settings files to show you how this will work so that in the future when you're using this tool, you'll be able to actually define some changes and then be able to run them again later. In a lot of cases, if you're working with a uh, you know, consistent manufacturer, you might be downloading a number of their different families over time. And if you're doing that, Generally speaking, if a manufacturer is, is you know, building pretty solid content, it might not match your standard, but it certainly should match internally other families that they're building. So if you download an air handling unit from this manufacturer, then you come back in the next project, even in the same project, and download a variation of that air handling unit or another you know, completely different product line that's still in the air handling unit type line, the parameters for the most part should be the same. At least those that you care about should be the same. And so you can actually save your settings and make this entirely repeatable later on. 
Now, there was a question that I saw pop up here. It asked if I can take a family with family processor and change it from a hosted family to a non-hosted or vice versa. And the answer is actually no. Basically what Family Processor does is automates anything that you can directly do in a family environment. If you can't do that yourself in a family environment within the family editor, then Family Processor can't do it either. So we, we don't manufacture any functionality that Revit doesn't already have. All we're doing is automating the, the really tedious task of you going in there and clicking on parameters and manually making changes to things. We automate that process. Okay. So enough talking on this slide here. I'm not a big fan of death by PowerPoint. Let's jump back over to Revit again, and I want to show you within Revit how this can work on a series of content. Now, I also want to kind of show you what I've got in the background here. I'm going to be working with like four or five families here on my side. If I open up my folder here on my desktop where I've got my little workflow folder, I've got five potential families that I'm going to be playing with, a couple A.O. Smith uh, pieces of content, and a couple Emacs pieces of content. So uh, I'm going to start with this AO Smith component. I'm going to pull up Family Processor. And just to be sure I have brand new settings, I'm going to click New Settings here. It's going to erase anything I may have done before and basically start me completely from scratch. Now, one of the things that I personally like to do, just as... Um, just as a, a basic setting here, I like to go into options and I like to automatically delete materials out of a family that are just junk materials, right? This happens to be a, well, I can't pull it up the side right now. This is a, a uh, water heater. So why I have analytical floor surfaces, slab surfaces, wall surfaces, default floor, default form, you know, default light source, it's not even having a light fixture itself, some massing properties. A lot of these materials exist in a lot of families, especially when they've been edited out of a project environment. And so to help keep things nice and neat, I like to just automatically delete those. That's one of the steps that I'll usually have checked inside of, of a project. Now, sometimes I do use the glass material, and so I won't necessarily use the option here to automatically delete default materials. Sometimes I'll do that in my Change Materials tab manually. But for today's purposes, I'll just let this do the default deletion of all the junk materials that I don't want. Now, one of the things that I also almost always do in 2015 is I almost always sort parameters by name within groups. So I'm sure many of you have seen already in uh, 2015, those of you who have been able to get on 2015, the ability to click on a parameter, and over here to the right, you can change the sorting order. So I can sort things ascending or descending, Well, and that actually does it for all parameters in that group. Or I can even move it up explicitly or move it down for the individual parameters. I'm going to cancel a lot of this so it doesn't actually do that just yet. You'll see Family Processor can do this as well on an entire selection of families across your network. So you can actually tell Family Processor just to simply go through and sort all your parameters by name alphabetically. That saves a little bit of time and makes your families a little bit easier to use in 2015. So back in Family Processor, that's one of the things that I want to have it set up is that it's going to be sorting parameters by name within groups. So one thing you'll notice here is that every single time I close Family Processor, when I open it up the next time, it remembers everything that I've done in here. That's why I clicked New Settings when I first opened this up in case I had made some changes from a previous presentation about this uh, Family Processor tool. So I've checked sort, by, uh, sort parameters by name within groups. The next thing I'm going to do here is do some parameter changing. Now within here, there's a parameter called Apparent Power. Um, apparent Power is a parameter that was added by somebody. I don't know who. It might have been a shared parameter. It probably is a shared parameter, but it's not my shared parameter, and it certainly isn't the one that I want to use. I want to use one called apparent load. That's the standard that I've got set in my little file here. So um, I'm going to take that particular parameter, and I'm going to modify it uh, over here on my replace with shared parameters tab. So I'm going to go ahead and do apparent power. By the way, that was my delete parameters tab. When I accidentally double-clicked on that, it was about to delete the apparent power parameter out of my family. I didn't really want to do that, so I undid that basically and switched over to the correct tab that I should have been on. I'm going to be doing a replace with shared parameters option here. And there's a couple of other things you could do, like adding of shared parameters. I'll get to this later on. Um, you can actually add family parameters if you'd like to as well. In this case, I'm replacing with shared parameters. So I'm going to swap one, one parameter in my family that might already be a shared parameter actually. So th this is probably a shared parameter, and I'm going to swap it out. I'm going to replace it with a shared parameter that I actually want to use in this case. The 
the apparent load parameter. Now what this is doing is sourcing my shared parameter list here from whatever shared parameters file I've got selected at the top, which is my shared parameters file in today's little presentation folder here. And uh, one thing that that family processor will do here is actually take my little apparent power parameter here and it asks it what its parameter type is. It says, oh yeah, you're an electrical apparent power, that's cool. cool. Over here in my replace with shared parameter, it's actually going to only list for me parameters that match this parameter type. So you can't accidentally swap it out for something that's not valid, like a text parameter, for example. So a family processor is going to help you by looking through your entire shared parameters file, and it doesn't matter what group it's in, it's just going to give you the parameters that can be swapped for a parameter that already exists. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this out for a parent load. Now, one of the parameters in here that I was looking at was the nominal diameter, depth, and height. Well, I want to swap those out for my depth, diameter, and height. So if I add those down below here, I'm going to go grab that again, uh, nominal diameter and nominal uh, height. Those are all length parameter types. So because I want to schedule that, the height and the depth and the diameter potentially or the width of something, um, and put that in my schedule for physical sizes maybe, I want to make sure that I'm using the proper parameters. In this case, depth is the parameter that I've got selected here. I'll just type D to get down to the depth. Grab that. I've got diameter here. I'll uh, drop this list out and type D again to get into the Ds real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and grab diameter. And then I'm going to do H here to get my height parameter. Scroll down a little bit and find height. So I can very easily find the parameters I want to swap out. Again, these are all sourced from my shared parameter file. Now I could go through this process here and manually add each one of the individual parameters that I wanted to show you today. I'm not going to do that. That's going to take a little longer. What I'm going to do in just a moment here is open up some settings that I kind of pre-canned here, you know, the, the whole Betty Crocker, I pre-baked this. But I'm going to go over here and change some parameters real quick first. Now, when I get to this tab here, parameters to change, and by the way, I should point something out about the uh, uh, family processor here. When this actually is told to process my family, it's going to do these tabs on change parameters in order. It's going to delete parameters first. It's going to then add shared parameters if there's anything to add. It's going to add family parameters if there's anything to add. Then it's going to replace the parameters that are in my family right now with shared parameters. And then it's going to change whatever's left over to do whatever I want to do with it. So at this point in time, there isn't a parameter in my family called depth, diameter, or height. There isn't one called apparent load. It has these names, but by the time it gets over here on the parameters to change, it's going to have these names right here. So I'm going to pay attention to that and make some explicit changes and, and do some searches through my shared parameter file to make sure I can sort these things the way that I want them sorted and configure them the way that I want them set up. So let's go over here. I'm going to modify these four parameters over here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show all of my shared parameters so this is going to show all my shared parameter file, uh, all the parameters in my shared parameter file, and it's going to show me all of the parameters that exist in my family at the same time. And I can search through all of them. So one of the parameters I had here was apparent load. So if I start typing in apparent, apparent load will show up in my list here. This is one that exists in my shared parameter file. I'm going to add that down below, and it will exist in my family by the time family processor gets to this tab. So for the apparent load parameter here, I'm not going to change whether it's instance or type. I have no idea how it's been set up in the family and how other formulas might be using the apparent load, what is currently called apparent power. So I'm just going to leave that alone. What I am going to do is regroup it, just in case it's in the wrong group in any of the families I come across. I want to make sure apparent load is always in the electrical loads group. And so I can change that. Also, there's height, width, and depth. So I'll put in height here. I'm going to go find height in my list. So there's height, add that down below. Again, I'm not going to change whether it's instance or type. I don't care what the manufacturer was doing. It can stay the same. What I'm going to do is make sure that I put it in the correct group. In this case, I'm going to put it in my dimensions group just in case it wasn't there already. Now, I'm not going to go through the rest of those three or the other, the other two. You can see exactly what I'm doing here, I think, where I'm changing the, the or adding a, a parameter name that will exist in my family, and I'm making some change to it in some form. A little bit later on, in just a minute here, I'm going to open up some other settings, and you'll see how I can actually do formula creation as well inside these families and, and how I can manipulate formulas and some techniques I use there. For now, let me open up some settings here. I've got two settings files saved. I've got this heat sample. This is the electric um, uh, water heater sample file that I put together, and it's got a number of settings inside of it. So here in the family level processing, I am sorting parameters by name on change parameters. I am not doing any deleting. I'm not doing 
doing any adding of any shared or family parameters. I am doing a lot of replacing of parameters though. I'm doing things like taking the GM phase, that, that general mechanical phase parameter, and I'm replacing it with a parameter that I use called number of poles. I'm replacing their GM voltage with voltage nominal. There's that height here. There's some of the families actually do have a height parameter, and I'm replacing it with my height in case it finds it. There's nominal height, which I'm replacing with height. You saw me do this one a little earlier. And there's a number of other parameters inside here that I want to work with as well that I've already gone through and kind of pre-canned what I want to swap out. Amps for amperage, apparent load for apparent load if it finds that, apparent power for apparent load. Normally I won't find both of these in a single family, but there might be you know, another family from another manufacturer, that Emax one. That one actually has apparent load in it already, but it's not mine. And so I want to make sure it's actually my shared parameter here. Ultimately, over here in parameters to change, I'm also making sure that they're all grouped up the way that I want them grouped when they actually make it into my project, into my families here. On the final tab here, select families and begin, what I'm going to do is actually process through multiple family files. So what I've done is browse to where my content is here on my desktop, this workflow SPM RFP folder, and I've taken all these families and I've added them down below to my list to actually be processed. Ultimately, what I recommend you all do when you're first using Family Processor, and those of you who are downloading this in trial format before you purchase it, you'll only be able to use the preview option until you actually make a purchase. But I recommend, even after you've purchased it, that before you actually run a major set of changes against your actual content, that you preview it first. Yeah, it might take it a little while. Maybe you give yourself a little subset of content before you actually run it but definitely run a preview and find out what Family Processor will do when you tell it to actually make the changes. For today's purposes, since I'm feeling pretty confident that I've got these settings mostly right, I'm going to tell it not to preview it. It's going to make the changes directly, and I'm going to tell it just in case some of those families are perfect, which none of them are, I'm going to have it resave even if no changes happen to be needed. There's an option down here, by the way, that you can choose that says log only the errors. Sometimes when you're processing a lot of families, this might be meaningful. Um, if I'm processing like three or four or five like I am right now, I like to show everything so I can see what it did successfully do and what it did not do so I can kind of check both and then I can maybe make a game plan of how I'm going to process the things that perhaps family processor couldn't do in an automated fashion. Now, before I finish this up, I need to close my active family. This family right here, this 30 to 50 gallon uh, water heater, this is one of the families that I want to process. So I'm going to start a brand new family, just a junk family. It doesn't even matter what it is. I'm going to pick a, a data device. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pick some other random family. It doesn't have to be saved, just to be in the family environment. And I'm going to tell family processor that I'm about to open up here. And remember, I told you it remembers all my settings. So my, my change parameters here, the replacing parameters things, it remembered that, remembered the parameters to change, and it remembered what my selection was, even if it doesn't show me the families found in the list above. It remembers that I told it to resave it, and it remembers that I'm not logging just the errors. It's logging everything. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and begin. One of my options in my option settings here is to just give me a summary real quick. And I always like to look through my summary just to make sure that I remembered exactly what it's about to do. So it's going to sort the families within the groups, it's going to delete all these materials if it finds them, it's changing these parameters by doing some replacing, and it's uh, so it's doing a replace with shared parameters option here, and it's changing them to put them in the right groups down here. And it's going to resave them even if nothing actually happens to be changed. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and continue. Now at this point, it's going to take a second to begin some processing. I can't pull that window across to my current screen, but it's actually processing through each of the five families. Um, it's just sitting on my main monitor over there. So in the meantime, I'm going to actually take a chance to go over and look at a couple of the uh, questions that popped up recently. So um, there was a question that said that the swapping of the shared parameters is something that uh, processor does not do. And actually, I'm pretty sure that it does. Uh, here in the family or the, the change parameters, when I'm doing that swap parameter option or change to shared parameter option, basically that's what's doing the swapping there. Um, so, um, and, and perhaps I'm using the wrong term for that. I'm not, it's change parameter. So changes from a, a family parameter to a shared parameter. Um, I have uh, also seen some people with some problems with sorting in Revit 2015. Some of the parameters refuse just to kind of actually listen to it. And the real reason for that, usually those parameters that are refusing to actually sort properly are those forced parameters that are out of the box parameters that Revit just gives you. 
And in a lot of cases, those parameters that are not sorted are actually manifesting when you get into the project environment. So in the family editor environment, maybe they're sorted properly, maybe not. Maybe like the identity data stuff that's, that's forced upon you, that stuff might not sort because you can't touch those parameters at all anyway. But when you get into a project environment, and sometimes the, uh, the project environment will give you a ton more parameters, those weren't affected by your sort process. So those might still not be sorted correctly. But at least the parameters that you generate, those that you control fully, you should be able to sort those without any problem. If you are having problems with that sorting, I'd like to know about it, and I'd like to help you find solutions. Because parameters that are not sorted alphabetically, at least the parameters that you make, um, not seeing those sorted alphabetically, for me, might OCD kicks in and it drives me nuts. Um, but, uh, you know, just in general, the users have a hard time using the content at that point. Okay. So it looks like family processor is done with those five families here. Let's take a look at what it's done. So here in the family, uh, the, the first family file, that 30 to 50 gallon file that I was using earlier, let's see what it actually did. So I gave it a whole long list of materials to delete, and it actually deleted a number of them. Some of them it didn't have. In fact, it tells me down here it couldn't delete some of these materials because they didn't exist in the document, and that's okay. But these up here, it actually did go through and delete, and that's fantastic. Down below that, I asked it to do some parameter replacements, and so it went through and found nominal depth and replaced it with depth, nominal diameter with diameter, and so on, all the way down the line, phase with number of poles, voltage with voltage nominal. That's all been taken care of. Now, it does have a few parameters that I gave it, perhaps from another family, that did not exist in there yet. Power factor, for example, did not exist in this family at all, so it couldn't make a switch to my power factor. It just says, well, it didn't exist. Okay, that's fine. So maybe I need to go back to that family and do some extra looking and see what's up with that power factor parameter. Maybe I have to manually add it in one of my steps to actually get it to add back to the family. Um, apparent load, of course, it didn't find because this particular family had the parameter called apparent power, not apparent load. So that was okay that it didn't make that swap. It didn't have amps to swap out for amperage and a few others down here. There was a few changes. Um, so voltage nominal was actually in a different group. And so it moved it into my electrical dash loads group. So it just kind of helped me standardize that. Number of poles was in a different group, so it moved that to electrical loads as well. Um, there was a number of parameters it could not find or for whatever reason could not move them to a group because either they were already in the group or they did not exist in the family. So that's fine. It gave me that information. And then after it did all this work, it went through and sorted all the parameters alphabetically for me and saved my family back to the original name. That's family number one. So it goes to the next family and runs that exact same process. It makes all those changes and tells me what it could and could not do for every single one of those families all the way down the list. Ultimately, it saved each one of them and made whatever changes it could possibly make. All right, now that that is complete, I want to show you some other things that you can do. I've gone through my primary processing here of these uh, individual families. Now, there's, there's another set of settings that I like to run, and sometimes I'll actually run my settings in two different stages. So I'll run my initial, like, swap these parameters out for mine, and then I come back with a second step. Um, I'm going to open up my settings here, and I'm going to do, like, my final electrical settings. So if I have a series, in this case, just a couple electrical settings that I like to use with specific formulas on them, and I like them set up as instance or type in certain ways, I want to actually have those set up in a certain fashion. So here in my change parameters, I'm not going to delete anything, but I am going to add a few shared parameters. Now, some of these, like apparent load, they're already going to exist in the family, and that's okay. Voltage nominal, it's already going to exist. That's just fine. If it doesn't exist for some reason, if apparent load didn't exist in any fashion, but I know that there's power on that component, it'll add it, and it's going to add it with this formula right here, using all these other parameters that I'm also adding at the same time. It's going to group them all into electrical dash loads for me. Now, later on, I may have already had a couple of those parameters in a family, so I'm just going to kind of back check and just make sure in case they did already exist that they're swapped out for my shared parameter just in case I missed that in a previous step. So it's going to take phase and swap it for phase and power factor and swap it for power factor if they, did, if they already exist in the family for some reason. And at the very, very end over here, I'm changing all those parameters and making sure that they're all set to instance because that's how I want them set up for my workflow. I'm making sure that they're all grouped again in electrical loads just in case they already had existed, and in case, again, they already existed, I'm also setting up formulas in a certain way that I want them to be configured. So you can definitely administer formulas inside of here, and I'm probably doing a whole lot of extra back-checking that I maybe don't need to do, but I personally do that just because I want to guarantee the, the, that the parameter exists, 
if it already did exist, that it's my parameter and that it's in the correct group and has the correct formula for what I need it to do so it schedules and functions in my way. So that's just how I use the, the family processor tool. It's one way that you can potentially use this. So after I've made those, those selections here, again, I'm going to go in here and do multiple family files. I'm going to research that folder. I'm going to grab all the families and add them below. I'm going to tell them to resave even if nothing needs to get done. And I'm going to tell it, in this case, because I'm pretty sure it's going to have a couple of errors, I'm going to tell it to just to only log the errors this time. It's going to run through, and again, my default material deletions on there, but it's telling me the parameters it's going to add to change uh, or to, to replace with shared parameters and the parameters to change. And it's going to resave even if nothing happens to be needed. So it's going to run through those exact same five families again. And at the very end, after this is all done, we're going to open up that 30 to 50 gallon family and just kind of take a look and see what it actually had accomplished. So this will take just a moment here. And there's another question I saw that popped up here. Um, the question was for shared parameters managers. It said, can I sort project parameters uh, in a project from the shared parameter manager tool? And the answer is no. Uh, I can drop pro uh, parameters into a project, but I don't have the ability to sort project parameters. Um, I don't believe the, the default interface has that ability, uh, so we don't have it either uh, via the uh, API as far as I know. Um, we can take a look at that though, but uh, the shared parameter manager as far as I know, in fact I'm pretty sure it does not do any sorting whatsoever. The only sorting that we do happens here in the family processor environment. Okay, so after it's finalized that processing here, uh, notice how all of these materials, none of them were deleted. The reason why is because they already have all been deleted. It's just kind of a back check for me to just make sure that those families are cleaned up. There was a few parameters that were not added. Notice this, voltage, nominal, apparent load, and phase. Those already existed in the, in the family, in this particular family. There was a couple things that could not change for whatever reason. And that was some of these could not be moved because they already existed in that group. And those are things that I like to see. I like to see things were already in the correct group so it didn't actually move it. And ultimately it saved it. Now there's a number of things here that it did do. It did add things like uh, probably real power was added because there was no error about that here. Um, I told it to only log the errors, and that's what it's doing. It's only telling you what it could not do for each of these families at this point. Ultimately, let's go ahead and take a look at that 30 to 60 gallon family again and see what it's done. So if I go, oh, th sorry, 30 to 50 gallon. If I open this up and I open up the family types here, notice how in my electrical loads now I have my, my apparent load and it has whatever that formula was that I had told it to set. It has number of poles, it has phase, it has power factor, real power, and nominal voltage. They're all set as instance parameters. That GM voltage is no longer even here anywhere. There is still a couple GM parameters, that general mechanical parameters, but for the most part, they're gone, um, for the, at least the ones that I had set. My dimensions are all swapped out instead of being nominal depth, diameter, and height. It's all just depth, diameter, and height. They're now all organized inside of dimensions as I wanted them to be. And again, my electrical parameters, except for this one frequency parameter here, is all grouped inside of electrical as I wanted it to be. So it went through and did a bit of cleanup for me. That was pretty fantastic. And that, that did it for five families in a very consistent way. Anything that it could not do, I can make notes on and come back and change in another fashion using, again, the family processor to rip through the entire library again. Now, I've used this particular process to do some basic standardization on upwards of 1,000 families. It's able to go through about a thousand families if you're doing just you know maybe 10, 20, 30 changes and do it in about two hours and strip out the materials. And by doing so, you can significantly reduce your library size and you can go ahead and standardize a lot of the common things that you're trying to schedule across an entire library of content or at least maybe a subset of your library of content very rapidly. And it doesn't have to be you sitting there doing it or an intern sitting there you know, slaving away and maybe not doing it consistently. This way you can guarantee that whatever you've told it to do, if it finds something, it will do it in exactly the same way every single time. Um, another question that had popped up about the shared parameter manager said, uh, if the shared parameter manager has a group of parameters defined um, to be loaded in the project, is there a way to kind of like, um, uh, for someone without access to the location of the shared parameters file to load that group? And the answer is sort of. It depends on what you mean by without access to the location of the shared parameters. If you mean they can't actually find that location, then no. They have to actually have, within the shared parameter manager tool, they have to be able to load the shared parameter file. 
and again, the shared parameter tool itself is actually a manager specific tool. It's what you wouldn't want to give to, to the average end user. So that really the, the loading of those project parameters should probably be done by a BIM manager who does have access to the shared parameter file. But sometimes I do have BIM coordinators on a project who have access to those manager tools, but they don't have right access to the shared parameters file specifically or to the folder that the shared parameter file exists in. Maybe they have read access so they can author families, you know, but they can't actually generate their own shared parameters. So shared parameter manager can function in that realm where they can actually go through and uh, they can add those grouped parameters, those pre-canned parameters into their project or into their family um, as long as they can read from the file. They don't have to be able to write to it. All right. Well, I've kind of gone through all of the information that I intended to here for, um, for both the, the, the tools here, and I've showed you how it can be used to kind of organize your shared parameters file, how you can go through and then use those updated shared parameter files uh, to fix your actual content using Family Processor. So unless there's uh, any other questions, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Nate to uh, talk about uh, some of our upcoming events here. Um, actually, never mind. There's a couple of questions I'm seeing pop through right now. So get, let's give a chance here to uh, to answer these real quick, Nate. Um, so there, the question that popped through says, is there a tool that can take shared parameters and update the parameters using a schedule within a project? So not just processing families, but actually updating the scheduled parameters as well. Uh, and at this time, there is not actually a tool that updates the schedules themselves. However, we have recently begun taking a look at that process, uh, and we, we believe it's possible, and we're actually looking at uh, possibly going through and, um, and, uh, and building a tool that will help you with that workflow as well. We have actually a, a client uh, who's working with us on a project. We've got about 200 some odd schedules to do some parameter changes on and uh, we don't want to do that manually. That would be incredibly tedious. And so we're trying to find a way to actually write a tool to help with that. So those of you who also maybe are doing some parameter changes in your firm, if you're going to go through and change some standards, um, you certainly don't have to, to fret. We're trying to put together potentially a tool uh, that'll do that as well. <laughs> 